Hello YouTube. This video is a result of a bit of a thought process. It begins with Spinosauruskin making a tweet in which he referenced Janet Bloomfield's video in which she questions whether or not women should have the right to vote. Actually, no. It begins earlier than that, when I first encountered Janet Bloomfield. She's a prominent men's rights activist, by the way. I was on a stream, I believe hosted by Kraut and T, when she was invited on. I don't think the stream was being broadcast, or if it was, I can't find it now. In any case, Janet proceeded to argue that women should be denied the right to vote. I argued strongly against that idea, and things actually got a bit heated, which, if you know me, might surprise you a bit. In any case, I forgot all about that exchange until Spino made his tweet, and then I thought to myself, I should make a video response to her. I actually started working on it when I realized there's hardly a point, because in the end, I can only make one really compelling argument. It's wrong to treat all women as if they are a homogenous group, and then deny them things based on that. If someone is willing to entertain the notion of denying people the vote based on their gender, then they obviously have already rejected that moral argument, and there's probably no point in trying to convince them. You're either willing to discriminate against people based on sex, or you're not at least in this case. But then I realized my main issue, and the reason I actually got angry with Janet the one time we spoke on that stream, is that not only is the idea bad, but it's not even remotely feasible. Think about it. Even if denying women the vote was objectively the most logical and moral thing to do, it's never going to happen at least not in the Western world as we know it. The simple fact is that women have the vote. They use it, and they'll never elect someone who is going to deny them that right. Without the vote of women, nobody can really get into power, so women will never lose the right to vote. So then, we have to consider under what circumstances Janet's idea might actually come to fruition. And the only scenario I can think of is if a fascist or dictatorial regime took power without the support of female voters and imposed this change on a country. And when imposing a change on a country against the will of the people in that country is the only way your idea can happen, it's worse than a bad idea. It's an impossibly bad idea. Now, normally there's no real issue with this kind of thing. People have impossible ideas all the time, and sometimes they can be useful. I mean, sometimes they lead to a compromise or a middle ground where the impossible ideal isn't met, but the situation is improved by a movement towards that ideal. Take the example of end violence against women campaigns. The ideal of ending all violence against all women is obviously impossible. But striving for that ideal should in theory lead to less violence against women. If that idea weren't inherently sex discriminatory, it might be a good one for that reason. But removing the right to vote from all women is not something that can have a middle ground. I mean, how would you determine a compromise in this case? Remove the vote from some women? Well, who? And based on what characteristics? And if such a compromise is possible, why not push for the removal of the vote from people with that characteristic rather than women in general? Ideas like this leave no real room for compromise, while at the same time they are impossible to achieve without resorting to despotism. So what purpose do they serve? Well, when expressed by the average person, they can act as a useful and interesting thought experiment, if nothing else. But when they are expressed by a movement, or by a prominent member of a movement, they can actually be harmful. If I'm an outsider looking at the men's rights movement, 
and I see a prominent and well-supported member of that movement calling for women to lose the right to vote, not only will I judge the men's rights movement to be sexist, but I'll judge them to be idiots for pushing for something that can never happen. To give another example of this, feminists constantly push for an end to the wage gap. Well, those of us who understand what the wage gap really is understand that ending it is an impossible goal unless you're going to resort to despotism. Men and women already largely make the same money for the same work. So to end the wage gap the way feminists talk about it, you would have to arrange it so that the average pay of women is equal to the average pay of men, which would require forcibly changing the pay rates of thousands if not millions of jobs to artificially inflate or deflate them. No one who stands to lose from such a change, and no one who cares about fairness, would vote for anyone suggesting it. So it's not going to happen unless someone takes power and forces that change on a country. So demanding an end to the wage gap is an impossibly bad idea, and it's one of the major reasons many people have turned away from feminism as a legitimate movement for positive social change. The same will be true for the men's rights movement as long as Janet Bloomfield pushes this idea it remains a prominent member of the movement. And this problem isn't confined to gender politics. You see this everywhere in all walks of life, and the more prominent the person or organization, the more the impossible idea hurts their image. So please, if you want to make actual, practical social change, don't push ideas that can't happen. Consider what would have to happen what would have to change in the world for your idea to become widely accepted, and either push for that change to the world, or modify your idea so it actually stands a chance of acceptance. I know I have arguably been guilty of a kind of impossible thinking as well in some of my videos, but I intentionally craft my ideas so that any move towards the ideal I present would be a move in the right direction. I've also made an effort to abandon or modify some of my more unrealistic ideas for social change, because frankly such ideas aren't of much use to anyone. So in the end, it doesn't matter how good your idea for social change is. It could be an idea that would produce utopia, or it could be an idea that discriminates against people based on their sex. If it's impossible to achieve and there's no way to compromise on it, it should be abandoned, except maybe as strictly a thought experiment. Anyway, I think I've made my point here. I'm Positive Improvement, and I wish you all the best. Thank you.